Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AudiTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at addition polymers. Now addition polymers are uh, made up from uh, monomer units and we can join them together to form long chain molecules that we call polymers. Uh, now this is just one way in which we can uh, make polymers and this is through an addition reaction. Um, and our monomer units that we have to use to make these are actually alkenes. So um, we're going to go through basically uh, how we can actually make them, what a addition polymerization reaction looks like. Uh, we're going to go through some specific examples as well uh, and look at the green chemistry aspect of these molecules too. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, how this actually happens. So you can see here we've got the alkenes joining together. It's called addition polymerization. Normally this reaction is, uh, goes by a radical reaction, um, although you, um, you don't need to know this for this uh, particular example. So you can see we've got two alkenes here. Uh, now an alkene obviously has a double bond. So they're clusters, well they're unsaturated molecules, uh, and we can join them together to form our polymer. Now you can see normally in polymerization we have two uh, of the same alkene that's joining together, but you can have different ones. But for the purpose of this, we're just going to keep it simple and keep them the same. So we've got two different types of alkenes, and these will join together to form a polymer. So that double bond opens up, uh, and we form this long chain. Now, we can have something called a repeat unit, uh, and you need to be able to identify what the repeat unit is by looking at a polymer chain. And you can see here, you can see that repeat unit is basically the unit that's repeating across the polymer chain, so it's like a pattern. And that repeat unit will tell you what the, will help you to work out what the monomer unit was that's made it in the first place. So, we can see here, there's our um, polymer chain. Our repeat unit, you can see we've got HR, HR, so our, repeat unit would actually be that. And so we call this a repeat unit. We'll put that there. Okay. And as you can see, the repeat unit to go back to the monomer that's actually made this molecule, all you do with addition polymers, you put the double bond back in between the two carbons, uh, and then you form these two, which are on the side here, and these are called monomers. So I'll put them there. Okay. So there's our monomers, and these are the molecules that make our polymers. So we've got some examples here. So we've got something called polyphenyl ethene, and polyphenyl ethene is actually a um, another name for polystyrene, which is the uh, plastic that you use to normally package uh, electrical goods uh, and food cartons, etc. It's a good insulator, so um, really lightweight as well, and quite cheap to make. So this is the structure of it here. Now we can look at our um, um, our polymer and we can identify the repeat units and then we can work out our monomer. So we're just going to draw it in red. There's our repeat unit. You can see that pretty clearly. Um, and so our monomer that makes up this is phenyl ethene. So we just remove the poly bit and we call it phenyl ethene. So we have carbon, put the double bond back in, hydrogen. Okay, there's our phenyl group. And our two hydrogens. So this is called phenyl ethene, and you would have a number of these, and these would join together to form a polymer. So I'm just going to put a little n next to there, and the n would show you um, that actually this polymer would repeat um, the same number of times as you would have monomers. Um, and it is important when you actually draw this that the bonds must trail outside of the um, bracket, and this shows that you have more of the left and right of this molecule as well. Okay, so we've got another one which is polychloroethene. Um, you may know this as um, may know this as PVC, um, so polyvinyl chloride is its old name, but we call it polychloroethene. So again, we can identify the repeat unit in these. So we can draw a square bracket around there and a square bracket around there. We can put an N to show we have a number of them as well. So this is our repeat units, and the monomer that we use to make this is again you just put the double bond in between them. Hydrogen, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen, and chlorine, and there you go. And this is what we call chloroethene as well. And um, it is worth pointing out at this point as well. Uh, if you notice that actually, even with the poly, it says ethene. None of these polymers will have a double bond uh, because it's actually broken to form the polymer. So uh, just watch out. It's not called phenylethene. It's still called ethene because this is showing you what the uh, monomer unit that's made it. Uh, you've just got lots of this monomer joined together, and that's where the word actually comes from. Okay, and on to the last one, which is polyethanol. Uh, you might know this is PVA, 
uh, or poly, um, polyvinyl um, acetate or polyvinyl alcohol. Um, so we've got our monomer units um, that we have to work out from this. So again, if we identify, there's our repeat unit there. Um, and actually this plastic is really useful um, because it actually dissolves uh, in water and it could be used for things like liquid tabs. So this is the plastic that you'll see on here and this stuff will actually dissolve in water. Uh, and it could also be used for things like medical bags as well. So if you've got linen and laundry from a hospital, it gets put into a, a bag that's made of this type of plastic here. Uh, it gets thrown into the washing machine uh, at a warm temperature and the actual plastic casing will dissolve. Uh, and it means you don't have to take out the, um, the laundry from inside that could be contaminated. So it is actually really, really useful. Um, and it's used quite a lot increasingly when we have things like um, liquid tabs, which are, um, you've got several detergents contained in one. It's, it's a lot more convenient for the customer to use. Okay, so the monomer unit for this reaction is that. And we have an alcohol, obviously on the bottom, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. Okay, so just finally, just to look at the uh, green chemistry, these things, uh, generally these um, addition polymers, they're really difficult to break down. Uh, they're really useful, um, with the exception of poly uh, of PVA. Uh, most of these ones are really difficult to biodegrade, mainly because the, of the non-polar carbon-carbon bond in between them. Um, things like enzymes struggle to uh, break these uh, types of plastics down. Um, so in terms of a green chemistry point of view, they're not very good, um, but they could be quite useful if you didn't want your plastic to degrade. So for example, if you wanted to um, make some kind of a plastic cabinet or plastic chairs, etc., and you don't want that type of plastic to degrade if you want to keep them for a long time. So um, that would be useful, but in terms of biodegradability, it's not very good. So um, there is another type of polymer which is called uh, condensation polymerization. There is a video that looks into that. So you just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video. Um, then polymers um, do actually biodegrade, um, whereas these ones actually don't. But um, that's it. Hope helps. Bye.